I just bought some new shoes, new running shoes. There's some Ultra Bone Peak 3s. So in the spirit of testing out my new shoes, I added some miles on last night. With a little over two hours of hiking on the first night, six hours of hiking yesterday, and about six hours again today, these new Ultra Lone Peak 3.0s are really treating me right. Not really finding any major issues yet. And ordinarily I have some really fussy feet and granted, I did put my orthotics in there, which certainly helps me and my feet. As I've heard it endorsed through Backpacker Magazine and through the Trail Show podcast. Yeah, it's definitely worthwhile. The waterproof version in my case. After over 300 miles and some severe beatings through Connecticut and Massachusetts and especially Vermont, I've decided to swap out these Ultra Peak 3, the Gore-Tex version, for the more sturdy, heavier boots that I have. I was hoping to get more mileage out of these, but yeah, clearly they've been through <laughs> some rough trails here in New England. In review, yeah, I'm a little disappointed that they didn't last for the whole trip here on my long section hike through much of New England. Yeah, I'm definitely getting tired of feeling those rocks underfoot as well. But I did definitely enjoy the waterproof features that saved my shoes from soaking through with water and saturating my socks. There was really only the one day in which I couldn't help but step through those deep mud puddles. But otherwise, yeah, my feet have actually stayed dry throughout the uh, five plus weeks that I've been out here now. I know from talking to many others on the trail that have the ultra lone peaks, I'm the only one who's been wearing the Gore-Tex waterproof ones. Uh, it's more common that people are actually wearing the non-waterproof versions and even having a preference for the older lone peak versions, the lone peak one and lone peak two for their own reasons. Certainly if I were going to be in a drier climate like southern Utah or you know the desert southwest there, yeah, there's really no reason to have the Gore-Tex version because the version without the waterproofing will dry out a lot quicker and of course that uh, nice dry desert environment helps shoes to dry out that much quicker. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the added support of the heavier boots here in Glencliff, New Hampshire. Not looking forward to that extra weight on my feet, but you can't have everything. And uh, yeah, that'll be some nice support underfoot through the presidentials here. Maybe somebody else can pick these up at the Hikers Welcome Hostel and get a few more miles out of them. But uh, in any case, that's my review of the Ultra Lone Peak 3, the waterproof version. I did enjoy my first pair of Lone Peak 3s enough to go ahead and try a second pair. I found that the same size in the normal non-waterproof version actually gave me some blisters. I've covered about 74 miles in 8 days. It's possible that my feet are less swollen than they were back on the AT in a waterproof pair of Ultra Lone Peak 3s. True to what I was told, the non-waterproof variety of Lone Peak 3s did end up drying out faster during the one day of rain that I had here on the first day. Just know that the non-waterproof version may tend to run a little bigger than the waterproof version of Ultra Lone Peak 3s. Other than the blisters on each heel, they were still comfortable with daily babysitting with moleskin and tape. I was able to make it through the 74 miles over eight days without any big trip killing sort of foot issues. That's all for now. See you next time.